over and over again here, brought out in the messages out of the 45th chapter of Isaiah. Remember how many times we've quoted that where the Lord said, Thus saith the Lord unto his anointed Cyrus, I'll open unto thee the two lead gates. Yes. The Lord showed us that the two lead gates are the gates of praise and worship whereby we come Glory. into his presence because he said, Enter into my uh, uh, gates with thanksgiving and enter into my courts with praise. And one of the things the Lord said through that anointing was, I'm going to give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. And so I just thought about a, a dream the Lord had given me and I told Brother Frank about it and we had discussed that several times but I don't believe I've ever told it to you but in this dream, hallelujah, I had, there was these two, I had two relatives of mine and her sisters. They're in a completely different state. And don't try to figure out who the relatives are. You'll miss the whole point of the dream. It's irrelevant. It was just set there for something that I related to because it was known, you know. And in this dream, one of these sisters had passed away. She died. And I went up to this house because somebody had come and told me that ever since they had buried this particular sister, the other one had went into a mourning that wouldn't cease. And I went in the house, and the sister had died in this front bedroom. And the bed was still there. And the dresser was still there. Hallelujah. And see, I get telling it, and it'll all come back to me. I start having the dream all over again. I missed something. The first part of the dream was I went in this little old building, this little apartment room, and I tried to sit down. I couldn't sit down. I don't know where it was too small. Everything was undersized. I went in the kitchen. I said, my God, I've never seen a sink so small in my life. Hallelujah. Come on now. I had outgrown that environment. I couldn't find anywhere that I could sit out. Hallelujah. The Lord knows what He's doing. He's been talking to us about growth spurts, hasn't He? Yeah. Right, yeah. And I thought, what am I doing in this place? Then I came to this second phase of the dream. And I walked in the house. And I'm going to tell you something. I thought they had a parrot morning in a cage. This lady that was alive was walking through that little old house and I never heard such a sad wailing and singing in all my life. I couldn't stand it. It went down into my hearing like a, like a spear. just stabbed me all over. I thought, my God, that sounds awful. And I couldn't find the light switch nowhere so I could turn the light on in that room. Hallelujah. But I looked over and I seen the house didn't just have the one room. It had another room. So I walked back into that other room. And the first thing I saw were it had walls of cedar all the way around it. It was done in walls of cedar. Hallelujah. Second thing I noticed was the floor was golden carpet. It had golden carpet. Somehow, I knew I had to get the furniture that was in that front room out of there because that's where death was. And I had to get it over into that other room where the gold was, the glory was, the life was. So I says to myself, let me get the dresser first. And I got the dresser and I carried it in that room and I put it in the other room. I come back and there was a broom standing there. And I said, I better sweep out from under where that dresser was. And just as I made a sweep with that broom, I looked up and there was a light switch on the wall. And I turned the light on in that room and began to sweep out from under where that dresser was. And then I said, now I'll get the bed. And the whole time, you got to understand, the whole time I'm doing this, that other lady, she's going from room to room, wailing. Oh, God, it's going over every nerve I've got. You know, she just won't cease. 
It's just the awfulest, the mourning, wailing sound. Like she came, like she's lost everything. And no peace, nothing. And it was an old, you know how beds used to be on casters. You had to slide them off the casters so you could move them. And I said, well, I've got to slide that bed all the way over in front of that door, and then I'll push it through into that room and set it up in there. And I moved that bed to the other side of that room. And when I moved that bed to the other side of the room, I looked down, and underneath that bed, hallelujah, was the biggest chest of treasures I've ever seen in my life. I ain't never seen diamonds so big. Ropes and ropes of gold spilling over out of the sides. I mean, treasures everywhere. Just God, gold, silver, jewels, rubies, rarities. And the minute I seen it, I was aware that that morning had ceased. That bewailing song was over. And I looked up and there stood that woman who had been doing all the crying and she had lit up on her face and happiness was flooding her soul. And she said, I didn't think I would ever see that again. Hallelujah! But the Holy Ghost had uncovered that there was still gold and silver and treasures. You can take that any way you need it tonight. Whatever you think you've lost, you haven't lost it. Whatever you think you need, it's there. Whatever you, li li listen, I'll give thee hidden treasures of secret places. Hallelujah, the Lord said it. We are uncovering an abundance of wealth in the kingdom and it's not Hamilton's and Washington's. All that takes care of itself when the kingdom's right. Do you believe that? But it was gold and silver and rubies and I believe that they represent gifts and revelations and unfailings and the shining forth. I believe it represents even more people coming together in this place and hearing the word that the Lord is birthing forth in this day. But you've got to get the deathbed out of that room. You can't leave it set the way it was. God is rearranging things. Amen. He's not doing it like He used to. Amen. He's showing us a new way that we've never seen before. Can you say praise the Lord? Which brings us right to what we're talking about because this morning in Ezekiel 1 and 1 we talked about the river, the, the revelation that was unveiled to Ezekiel about the throne. First of all, it began by the river. He was by the river and he was sitting among the captives by the river. And most of these captives sitting by the river had hung their hearts on the willows and refused to see another realm and another dimension and another glory. And how easy it is to fit with the crowd when it's like that and just get swallowed up by that that surrounds you. And yet, if you can receive it, there is a realm right there in your midst uh, where you can see the visions of God. Somebody say, praise the Lord. So the Bible says, by the rivers of Shabar among the captives, uh, and it came to pass that it was the 30th year, and it was the 4th month and the 5th day. 30 being the number of maturity. Four being the number of creation. Yes. And five being the manifested divine grace. Yes. Yes. He's destined to bring creation yes. to a day in Him that is unqualifies Him to remain in the crowd He's amongst. You can fit in so easily. You can blend in. If human beings have any law that rules them, it's the law of adaptation. 
You can go to any country under any circumstances and learn how to survive. Yeah. You can train your system to digest their food. If you take it in little quantities and with vitamins at the time, you can even drink their water in due time if you prepare your system for it. Christians abuse the law of adaptivity where faith is concerned because faith wishes you not to adapt to some environments, but to arise and declare your right to be free of that environment. The law of adaptivity is wonderful in the fact that you learn whatever state you're in to be there with content. But it's horrible when somebody learns to live with things they don't have to live with. Amen. Such as pain, disease, sickness, depression, oppression, infirmities of, it, of the flesh, or, or anything of that nature. Amen? Amen? And it's terrible to have the law of adaptation working, over, you know, over forcefully working, when you're among an environment of unbelief and people who cannot see God doing anything wonderful. This is proven in the fact that in churches all across America right now, thousands and thousands and thousands of people with the same Bible that you brought to church for you tonight are thoroughly convinced that the end is upon us. Everything's failing. Doom is around the corner. And in one second, we can all be wiped out in a minute. Amen. Yet the same Bible in this house yes. and in this environment will tell you it's the most glorious day yes. that's Amen. ever dawned. On the earth is the day of the appearing of the sons of God. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So instead of becoming a part of his environment, he listened to something else. He listened to the flow of the river. To the flow of the river. I'm so glad the Lord gave us that song, Feel the Rhythms. Feel the Rhythms. Even in the midst of this meeting tonight, there's a heavenly rhythm. And ever since we've gathered in this room to seek Him, it's been stirring and beat. God is very poetic. Everything He does rhymes. Oh, glory, I felt that go all over me. Nothing He does is out of sync, out of order, belongs over here when it manifested over here. No, no. Everything He does is in poetry. It's in form. It's in line upon line. Yes. Precept upon precept. Can you say praise the Lord? The beauty of God is He's always on schedule. Nothing's took Him by surprise. Everything is as He's ordained it to be. Even when in this realm it don't look like it, in the heavens all is well because it's already finished. Amen. But what I wanted to get across to you is that line. Let's go into that line now that He said, and lo, the heavens were Opened. Open. Let's take that line for just a few moments tonight. Because we get the wrong implication of the word open when we think about somebody just uh, opening a door or opening a window. The word in the literal is they were rent. They were torn apart. They were, hallelujah, it's, it's opening is correct just in the sense that, that there's a division. There's something going to span out so that you can see and enter and walk in and lay hold of and take part in glory to God. But what you need to see tonight is in the Lord's revelatory plan, the whole purpose of revelation is to know that it isn't something God has to think of or produce or go get or make happen. It's something that has always been there. It's something that has not failed one time to exist in the heavens. The only thing you need is an unveiling so that you can behold what is already there. Let me put it more plainly. That financial need that you have tonight is already the miracle for it is already there. That healing you need is already there. That word you need is already there. It's not coming. It's there. But you have to have your eyes open so you can see the unveiling of the miracle and the sign and the wonder that you need to have. The very words that might put your whole family back together again could be in your belly right now. The very prayer that will cause your neighbor's blind eyes to never be blind again could be swirling around in your belly right now. The very prophecy that will loose a full-fledged move of God among
among all of us in this room tonight that will never cease is probably somewhere in this building right now. The very tongue that will cause you to go into a ministry of intercession where you stand as a king and priest unto God and know that you have the ability to change somebody's whole situation Glory. is more than likely in here, this moment, yes. this minute, this second, sitting on one of these pews yes. is the key to somebody's whole life. Yes. When you come together, have not ever one of you a song? Have not ever one of you a hymn? Have not ever one of you a prophecy? Have not ever one of you a tongue? We come to church and the best we can do is wonder what the preacher's going to preach on tonight. Wonder what they're going to sing tonight. When our whole gear is, wonder what God's going to speak to me tonight. Wonder what the Lord's going to move on me with tonight. Wonder if I've got a tongue. Wonder if I've got a prophetic word. Wonder if God's going to tell me to lay hands on him. Oh, I believe I'll shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got a word up there a while ago for Sister Joanne, the Lord told me to tell you that he's going to cause your singing voice to come back to you and you're going to bless people with your voice again. You're going to start getting up and singing. And you're going to, the Spirit's going to move on your voice. Hallelujah. And just like you used to get so anointed when you sang, that's coming back to your house. And your voice is going to be strengthened and you're going to start rehearsing at home and, and feeling that voice get stronger and stronger. Praise the Lord. You're going to sing even right here in this room and bless people among the body of Christ through that anointed voice of yours in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 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 I mean, when you realize that everything that will that will set this whole thing in motion, so that it'll never be in reverse again, is sitting right here in this room. It'll make you get down to brass tacks and say, "Hey, hey, open that heaven, Hallelujah! Open unto me that vision, unveil that thing to me, and let me see it, so I can walk into it." It's not that they're closed; it is just that we need them. To, we need a revelation of what God is longing to do, to get done, right. to show us. Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. There's too many people worried about stupid stuff. They're spending their prayer time on dumb, frivolous things that the Lord promised He'd take care of. They're praying all day long for natural things when the Lord said the whole key to getting every need you've got met and having abundance and having health and having everything you need is for you to seek first the kingdom of God. And he is right. Then he said, be in health and prosper even as thy soul prospereth. Yeah. That tells me if I devote my time to getting close into that realm of God to the glory manifesting in my life. If my main hunger is for Him and His Word and His righteousness, uh, then I don't have to worry about anything else I need. That's called faith. It trusts Him to take care of all the rest. I don't have to tell Him about it. Don't have to remind Him of it. Don't have to go beg Him for nothing. Just seek His face. Hallelujah. Seek His glory. And so the, the Word of God says the heavens were open. And the Word is they were rent. Now look with me in Isaiah 64. And we'll see a pattern unfold here. This is the cry of God's prophet in this hour. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens. I'll tell you that word rend. You, you, it's a strong word when you look it up. Tear them down. Get a hold of them and snatch them down. Lay hold of them for yourself. Believe they're yours for the taking. Somebody say, please, the Lord. You say, what do you mean heavens? Well, I mean that there ain't no such thing as a heaven. Well, it got quiet then. Go ahead and let her thud and thump. Now, when that soaks in, I'll finish the statement. There's no such thing as a heaven. But there is the heavens. 
Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everywhere heaven in the singers using this Bible, if you look it up, it should always be translated plural. Heavens. There are dimensions. There are realms. There are, oh, hallelujah, there are levels. There are discernments. There are, hallelujah, explosions of glory that awaits you. Don't limit yourself to just one plane over the other somewhere. Honey, listen. He's here. And his heavens are open. Yes. Yes. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens. Yes. Rend the heavens. I'm going to tell you something. For years and years, people ain't been able to walk in the knowledge of an open heaven because the only thing they've ever known about is a heaven. And that a heaven is way off yonder beyond their knowing and beyond their reach. Yes. Every song they sing proves it. Will you meet me over yonder. Won't it be wonderful there? I hope to God it gets wonderful right here. Amen. 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 Everybody will be happy over there. That's because can't none of them get along here. I'm preaching better than your shout. When we all get to heaven, we'll start rejoicing. That's what's wrong with you. You have to rejoice right now. You understand what I'm saying? Right. The reason the saints have never had a concept of a heaven they can enter and see the visions of God is because all their lives have been made to think there's one heaven and it's a circle land somewhere beyond the blue and they can't get to it unless they die to get there. Right. You see, the heavens are shut up by wrong teaching, wrong thinking. Glory be to God. Glory. And the Bible tells us that when the heavens are shut up, there's no rain. But thank God He's opening the fountains of the deep. Glory. Oh, glory be to God. And this time it ain't just the former rain or the latter rain, but it'll be both of them in the first month. How many know we've never seen a move of both rains at one time? We've seen the former rain on the day of Pentecost. We've seen the latter rain in 1948. But now, glory be to God, in this open heaven, uh, the clouds are black right now with rain. Oh, hallelujah. And the rain that's coming is the former and the latter. Hallelujah. Former and the latter. I mean, you just think about all this stuff we sung for years. Tell Mother I'll come there. I never could stand Mother's songs, no way. All the reason people sing them is so they can cry. And I'm not into having an emotional ceremony, but I can have a Holy Ghost time in Jesus. Somebody say praise the Lord. How many understand the point I'm trying to get across? I'm not trying to be facetious, ugly, or attack anybody's belief system. I'm just telling you no wonder the people of God don't believe they can come into realms and realms and realms of the glory. Hold up, I saw up high. The Bible said they go from strength to strength inside. Righteousness is revealed from faith to faith, and we're changed from glory unto glory, meaning then we go level by level, dimension by dimension. Hallelujah level and plain and level and plain until we come to the fullness of the revelation and the path of the righteous is as a shining light that shineth brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Glory, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. I think about uh, songs. I mean, they wouldn't even call this home. They'd say that was home. That's right. They were never at home here. Because they said Abraham was looking for a city. And that made him a pilgrim. Well, I've got news for you. Paul found that city. Abraham was looking for And it wasn't built out of wood and earth. But it growed into a holy habitation. Glory, Glory to God. Hallelujah. I did feel heavy in worshiping. Now I'm feeling all fire and shouty. I may have to take a run and then calm down again. Hallelujah. How I many know it's all the glory of what manifestation it brings? It's his glory. glory. Woo, it groweth into a holy habitation. Spurts of growth. Hallelujah. Woo. She can't tell about her son, not about her. 
And he said, I'm found of them that sought me not. I said unto me, Behold, uh, behold me, behold me unto a nation that was not called by my name. Glory, glory. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you wild branches Hallelujah. that have been grafted in, yes. that didn't belong, but he took away that that bore not fruit to make room for that which would bring forth fruit unto repentance. He said there in verse 3, A people provoking me to anger, contending in my face, sacrificing in their gardens, and burning the incense upon the altars and the uh, bricks, and remain among the graves. Hello, church. Remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments. Oh, good God. Can't you just see how that fits in with the Spirit? They eat swine's flesh and the broth of abominable things in their vessels which say, Stand by thyself and come not near to me. I am holier than thou. Who is the Lord referring to? All the self-righteous people who think that they're working their way to some reward. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Oh, but he left that group and found the people who sought him not. Oh, hallelujah, he made it. I don't know how all these people preach it. Free will overrides God's will. When he says right here, I went and made myself known to a people that wouldn't even seek me. I went and spoke to a people that didn't even want me. I went and revealed myself to those who had not even known to find me. Oh, glory to God. And I turned them people, started saying, now let's in here, you new people, you people that's come in by grace, you get away from us. Jesus. Don't have anything to do with us. We're holier than thou. That's one, one statement that isn't a chimney corner one. That's really in the Bible. The holier than thou. Are you listening? But in verse 8, thus saith the Lord, is a new wine is found in the cluster. Oh, hallelujah. And one saith, destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. Hallelujah. So will I do for my servants' sake, that I may not destroy them all. And I will bring forth the seed out of Jacob, and out of Judah, and inherit her by mountains, and my elect shall inherit it. And my servants shall dwell there. Oh, glory to God. And he goes on in verse 17 to tell us that he's making a new heaven and a new earth. And the former one will not be remembered, neither shall it come into your minds. Hallelujah. Brother, if you'll let God rend the heavens for you, if you'll walk into that place in Him where the visions and the revelations flow, then you won't even be able to call to your mind the former days of struggling and hitting and missing and trying to survive but you will live in what did he say you're going to plant and you're going to eat and not another you're going to build your own houses and nobody's going to take them away from you oh hallelujah but you're going to sit in that which you had built how are we going to do it because we've come in the open heaven mentality we no longer feel that anything is shut off to us, but we have access granted to us uh, to come freely into the things of the Spirit and behold them as they really are in Him. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Now the Bible tells us that John was in the wilderness baptizing and they would keep coming to him and asking him, who are you? John said, they said, are you the Messiah? Are you the promised one? And John said, hallelujah, I am the voice of one. I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. According to Isaiah, that was God's anointed watchman and forerunner of that hour who would bring an end to the law and the prophets by presenting the kingdom that was coming <coughs> and then saying in Jesus it was here. Somebody say amen. amen. Some people are still praying for the kingdom to come, but it's already here. 
you got people that believes that they're waiting on the Lord to set it up on the earth, but He's already set it up in His people. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. And what's in us will certainly flow forth from us Glory. until Glory. everything is subdued to the power of the Christ Glory. nature. Somebody Glory. say amen. amen. Lions are going to eat straw like oxes. Children are going to play on a hole of a cockatrice den and it won't sting them. And if a man dies at a hundred years old, they'll call him an infant. Hallelujah. Bless you. Bless you. That don't line up with theology because they say over yonder you never die. The Bible said in the earth a man did die at 100 years old. They'll have to call him an infant. <coughs> Hallelujah. Bless Lord. Bless. That's your kingdom in the earth. Lord. Bless. Amen. Amen. John said repent because the kingdom is at hand. The word repent metanoia. Change how you think about the kingdom. Right? right? Then he began to do something that they had seen. He baptized. Yes. What was he doing baptizing? He was baptizing them out of an order to present them anew for what that was coming in the Christ of glory. He began to prophesy to them in John 1 and say, I am not that light, but I am sent to bear witness of that light which is the true light that lighteth how many men? Every man. Oh, come I shut God. He lighteth every man that cometh into the world. You ain't going to get no eraser and knock that out because it's written in the eternal spirit of God. He lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Every man born in this earth has a spirit. And that spirit he's of inside can't come from nothing but God the Almighty. Hallelujah. Son of a whole And I've got news for you. There will no spirit ever be sent to an eternal torment because the Word of God says that the spirit of the beast goeth downward, but the spirit of man goeth back to the God who gave it. Jesus did not say fear him who can destroy both body and spirit in hell fire. He said destroy him who can destroy both body and soul in hell fire. Somebody say praise the Lord. The soul he speaks of there is one who has not been brought into the marriage alignment of oneness with the born again spirit. Somebody say praise the Lord. So we do not teach in this church annihilation or permanent destruction or the cessation of a spirit for a spirit that came out of God surely must go back unto the God that gave it. Let all this of the beast go downward. Let it go into destruction. The only thing, difference between us and they are we let the, uh, we let the spirit of his mouth get the, that son of perdition that was in us and destroy him. That's another message, isn't it? But the Bible said, John said, He lit every man that cometh into the world. You don't get born again because something comes down on you. And for years, that's the way they prayed for something to come down on them and birth them. In the kingdom, the whole time, it wasn't something needed to come on you. It was something needed to come up in you and out of you. Glory to God. Resurrection means to stand Him up again. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, whole time of a Sunday. You don't need uh, uh, somebody to come shake you from the outside. Something needs to shake you from the inside. Lord, the Holy Ghost, the resurrected yeah. Spirit of Jesus, yeah. gives life to that seed and causes him to resurrect in the Spirit of God. And it's the Zoe eternal, inherent, never ending life of God that is in humanity tonight. And the life in the seed will come forth if the Holy Ghost waters such a thing. Surely it will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John said there's one coming after me but he's preferred before me. Yeah. Yeah. Because he was before me. Amen. His fan is in his hand and with it he doth thoroughly purge his floor separated the wheat from the chaff. The wheat he'll gather into the garner the chaff he'll burn up with unquenchable fire. That ain't hell fire, that's Holy Ghost fire. Oh glory be to God. Would to God every man take a swim in the lake of fire tonight and let the Holy Ghost burn him up. 
until there's no desire but that of Christ anymore. Glory. The Bible says that John said they're standing, he's standing here among you and you know him not. And I'm trying to tell you right here in this meeting tonight, yeah. there's miracles among you and you know them not. There's signs and wonders among you and you know them not. I don't mean you don't recognize and respect and honor it being there. I mean in the <coughs> spirit realm, you've got to have an eye open in experience where you see what is in right. your hand. Pot of oil's in your house, ain't it? The Glory. blessing's in your house, isn't it? Glory. The Bible said that John said, I indeed baptize you with water, but he that cometh after me, it is who will baptize you with the Holy Ghost <laughs> and with fire. Glory. He's standing here and I don't know him. And the next day, the next day, John seeth Jesus. What a revelation. Glory. One day he said, I can't see him yet. He's standing here. I don't know him. But the next day, he sees Jesus and cried out, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And Jesus, who was God in the flesh, eternal Godhead personified, creator, hallelujah, first and last, alpha and omega, beginning and ending, came susceptible to the power of his own created element and walked into that water and allowed that that he created to wet him all over. Amen. He walked out to John and John said, I have need to be baptized of thee. Jesus said, suffer it to be so, for thus it fulfilleth all righteousness. And he was not sprinkled, christened, padded, or dolloped, he was dumped under the water and when he came straight up out of that water, lo, the heavens were opened. Look here at me. They ain't never been shut since. Glory. Never, 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 never. I don't care if you thought they were brass or stone. They've never been shut since Jesus come up out of the rivers of Jordan. Hallelujah. Surely Jesus' baptism took if nobody's did. Furthermore, we know it produced, hallelujah, something because the Holy Ghost descended in bodily form. That's the way he's working in here tonight. In bodily form. As a dove. That dove had flew from Noah's boat through generations, through people, through prophets, through laws, through holy mountains and not so holy mountains to find a place for the sole of her foot to lie on. And when John brought up Jesus, the dove found rest for the soles of her feet. And a voice came from heaven. I'll tell you where that voice came out of. Right out of the sun and said, This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Let's, let's think for a minute about Stephen, who was full of seven baptisms. He had seven fullnesses. He was full of faith, full of sign, one full of miracles. Seven of them listed in the book of Acts who preached with such revelation of what Jesus Christ had come to fulfill all the prophets and all the law. Come on. While he preached, his face shone like that of an angel. The glory, all, all of them get that wrong. They think that didn't happen after he's dead. That's stupid. He was preaching. Read your Bibles. While he was preaching, he got up in the glory in their midst. And they could not stand to look at him because the glory light was all over him. And he said, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised of heart. <laughs> yeah. You think on a Sunday morning and I get a little disgruntled because you don't shout enough you ought to go home and pout over it. I want to tell you, Stephen said, if you brought your stiff neck and uncircumcised your heart, well did the prophets prophesy of you, you do always resist the Holy Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> he told 
to the point that the people <coughs> were gnashing their teeth because his word was so powerful it hit them in the belly and they knew it was lively. Yeah. And when he got transfigured in their sight, they thought that if they killed him, the glory would not be there. They would not be responsible for hearing what he said. Kill the prophets, you know. Isn't that right? Oh, that Amaziah in the book of Amos. Amos got to prophesy and Amaziah said, prophesy anywhere but the temple. <laughs> That's the way some of these pastors are. Prophesy anywhere but our church. Amaziah said, don't you prophesy here in the king's house and not in the temple. And Amaziah said, let me tell you something. He said, I was out there in the fields working. I didn't call myself. The Lord God, he put this word in my mouth. And bless God, if I can't say it here, he'll make a way for me to say it somewhere. And Amaziah was telling him, don't bring that plummet line around here no more. We don't want to measure up to the deep things of God. Where are we on time? 14 minutes. Well, I don't need all that, so we're good. The Bible said that they began to stone him, and Stephen said, Lay not this sin to their charge. With that said, you'd think he'd be screaming out. You'd think he'd be saying, screaming because of the blood, because of the pain, because of the blows of rocks. But remember when they started stoning, he wasn't in the flesh, he was in the spirit. He never felt one rock, and he never felt one stone. He was caught up in vision while they were blasting him with rocks. And the vision he said, I see. <laughs> glory. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I see heaven open. And I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hold up my shot. I see it open. Hallelujah. Jesus is standing. Not sitting. Standing. Hello. Standing at the right hand of God. And with that said, he did not die. He fell asleep. Got your Bible there. Check it out when you get home. He didn't die. He fell asleep. He just got up out of the body. Stepped right over in the cloud. And was standing there in a new state of being. Same Stephen. Same word. Same glory. Same message. Same anointing. Just more heavenly than he was earthly. Let's get one more and we'll go. Acts 10. There was a just devout man whose name was Cornelius. The name Cornelius means of a horn. The Lord's been talking about the horn tonight. Of a horn. Same was a just devout man who gave much alms and prayed to God always. While he was praying, he had a visitation of the supernatural which the Lord told him, I want you to send two men to Joppa. For behold, Simon Peter lodgeth in the house of Simon the Tanner. Hallelujah. He's over there by the sea. And I want you to send two men from Joppa that they may go and receive his hand and fellowship and bring him back here to deliver a word unto you. Peter was on the housetop praying, praying. And he was not in the spirit. He got up hungry. He was not going to get in tongues, interpretation, or a prophecy. He was going to eat dinner. His belly was empty. They were preparing victuals for him. And he was going that he may eat because he was hungry. And on his way off that roof, the Holy Ghost hit him. Yeah. And he fell out under the power. And when he did, he went into a trance. When he went in that trance, he saw heaven open. And he saw something come down out of heaven. It was a vessel looking to him, but really it was a sheep that was knit at four corners. So it looked like this gigantic bag sort of thing 
And can you imagine the anticipation of Peter as he longed to know what was in that vessel? At the moment he's excited over it, in a minute he's going to be all distraught over it. You never know what you'll see in the open heaven. And when God shows you something you're not expecting, you can't reject it because it don't line up to your agenda. Right. Amen. 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 A lot of people want to have a meeting or a move of God as long as it goes according to their agenda. There are people that have issues. And they're stupid, childish, frivolous issues and they need to grow up and get over them. Some people won't dare go to a church to keep the temperature too cool. Well, you just never would come here, would you? That's a stupid reason not to go to a church. That's fleshy and that's dumb and it's stupid. Can you say amen? We've had people for years that love to hear a certain preacher we'd get him here in revival. And people wouldn't come because they said that Brother Edwards, he keeps that church so cold. Well, get over it and bring you a sweater. And shut up and quit robbing God and the people of their blessing because your presence would bless them if you were here. Yeah. And you say amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. There's people that have hang-ups. Change your windows. Change your carpet. Change your pew. Yeah. And all of a sudden their dander goes straight up in the air and they're ready to go. Well, I'll tell you, anybody that'll go over that ought to go with flying colors. Bless you, God. Because in the end, there'll be a hindrance to the move of the river. They'll try to block everything God does. And you say, praise the Lord. People have issues over stupid stuff. Amen. Baby fire. And Peter was, a, in my opinion, he was very immature about this thing that was about to happen. I think he could have been a little more grown up about it. Yes. The Lord let down the sheet and opened it up. And he couldn't stand what he saw. Right. He saw a bunch of Gentiles. Yes. He saw people that weren't of their denomination. Yes. <laughs> people that weren't of their mother church. Right? Yeah, right. All manner of four-footed beasts mm -hmm. fouls of the air and creeping things. And the Lord said, Peter, kill and eat. Let me tell you something. It wasn't what was on that sheet Peter needed to kill. It was what was in him he needed to kill. He needed to kill his traditional views. He needed to kill his flesh. He needed to kill what he thought about them people because he was prejudiced against them. When the Lord said kill, he wasn't telling Peter to kill them. He's telling Peter to let the word cut that mess off of him. Glory to God. Glory. He said, rise and eat. What did he mean? Eat them? No, he meant fellowship the kingdom with them. Yes. Speak to them this wonderful word of life. Amen. Bring them the message. How do you know? Because that's what he's fixing to do. Amen. Amen. And, and the Lord, what did Peter say? Not so, Lord. He thought he was going to make the Lord real happy. Not so, Lord. Nothing like that should ever entered into man. And the Lord rebuked him. He said, Peter, if I called it clean, don't you call it common? Don't you say, don't you say it's just old average Joe. Oh, you get in there and eat with them. You fellowship with them. You How many times did that happen? Three times. And when it was let up and Peter was back in his body, in his natural means, he still doubted what he saw in the vision. And the Lord said, Peter, Behold, there's two men at the door. Is it two or three men? Don't matter, but there, there was two men at the door. He said, go with them doubting nothing. You people have got to go with the river doubting nothing. Even if you don't like the way it's flowing at the moment, it's God's river. Jump in there and go. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. Don't stand around waiting on some move that'll that'll pacify your flesh to take place. That won't never happen. Hallelujah. Because in the end, glory to God, we're all going to be in the same river and the same flow and wind up in the same place in God. Can you say amen? Amen. Well, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, I feel God. Amen. I feel the anointing. Praise the Lord. Peter went. He was so dignified he wouldn't touch it. Because he was against the law to touch it. So he said, well, I'll just preach to him. 
know what happened, don't you? While he yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on the whole bunch of them. And you know he did because they all spoke with tongues and prophesied. The Lord said, Peter, I don't need you to touch them for me to pour out my spirit on them. All I need is somebody to speak the word. He spoke the word and the Holy Ghost hit the whole bunch and then poor old Peter had to go back and, and, and get up his nerve to explain to his friends. And it took him forever to do it. It did read your Bible. He just couldn't let everybody know what had happened over there among them Gentiles. But Paul come and he jumped in the river headlong. And he told them all, said, don't call me an apostle of the Jews. Call me an apostle of the Gentile. Hallelujah. I'm going among the Gentile and revealing the message of mysteries of the kingdom. So you see, it's an open heaven thing. You're granted accessible rights to the supernatural world. When I sit there with a willow bunch, it's got their hearts hung up. When you can yield to the sound of the river, and be lifted up into the visions of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, if we're not careful, even we good Pentecostal kingdom people will get to complaining about everything. We'll go in a service and instead of finding what's right with that service, we try to find what's wrong with it. I've been guilty of that. Have you? I've said, oh, I don't like this song and they're singing it. And then I've said, oh, I wish they'd do that beat differently. And I'll probably do it again because he remembers we are but dust. Amen. Amen. But I'm telling you now that we ought not, we ought to get away from that negative realm Amen. of trying to find what's wrong in a meeting. Amen. Trying to find what's wrong in a person. Amen. And just let's enter in instantly yes. and hear the sound of that river flowing. Oh, I Glory. feel that. Glory to God. Amen. And be lifted into the heavens so that we can behold the visions of God. Hallelujah. If nothing else, go ahead and get your blessing regardless of what's going on. Go ahead and get touched regardless of what's going on. Surely if you're hungry, somebody in that place is hungry as you are and the two of you together will make a demand on a touch from the Lord. Amen. And you get to be, that's the reason we got to learn how to worship Him. And we've got to find that flow. Hallelujah. And when we find that flow, we've got to remain in that realm of the Spirit so that God can reveal His visions and His understandings and His revelations and His unfailings until all are brought to the unity of the faith. Somebody say, praise the Lord. My God, I feel a way of glory sweetness. Stand on your feet, lift your hands and hallelujah, honor that wonderful feeling that's coming in this room right now. I'm gonna buy no shop, call it in an eel, pull up a son of a lion. My God, I felt that wave all over me. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. I think we got just enough of a people tonight. We could probably make one big stretch right across the front here and worship the Lord a few minutes together. Hallelujah. Uh, preferring that everybody not hug the front pew either. Just stand here together in the front of me and let us worship Him in spirit and in truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.